seaweed. It's green, slimy, and tastes great with rice. But is it America's next cash crop? Also known as macroalgae, seaweed is already used to make everything from toothpaste to ice cream. And thanks to recent scientific breakthroughs, it may soon be used to make biofuels. The value of the global seaweed market is expected to reach $9 billion by 2024. Most of the seaweed we use comes from farms in Asia, but there aren't enough of these farms to meet the rapidly growing demand. Experts say expanding the seaweed farming industry could boost the global food supply and remove millions of tons of carbon from our oceans. Now scientists and entrepreneurs are working together to introduce seaweed farming to coastal communities across the U.S. and beyond. Inside Science There are a small number of seaweed farms in Europe and along the east coast of the United States. But on the U.S. west coast, where forests of fast-growing seaweeds abound, seaweed farming is almost non-existent but oceanographic engineer Kristen Davis is trying to change that. Davis wants to bring large-scale seaweed farming to California's coast, so she's leading a team of researchers to test the waters and see if such an industry could exist in harmony with California's coastal ecosystem. We would like to try growing it offshore of California because we know that there are some natural macroalgal communities that grow well here. So Macrocystis is you know, the kelp that we're all familiar with in California, and it grows very well uh, near shore. It feeds on the upwelling, uh, natural upwelling of nutrients. And so a good place to start to try to grow a lot of kelp is where it naturally grows. I do think it has potential to be a, a big new industry, and I think that's echoed by a lot of people who are really excited about it right now. Right now, Seaweed farms only produce around 10 million dry metric tons of seaweed annually, but that number is expected to rise as seaweed farming becomes more widespread. We're in the very beginning stages of this project. We're putting together a modeling system that will help us to evaluate farm designs, macroalgal farm designs. Right now there's a lot of ideas about different ways to accomplish offshore macroalgal cultivation that are economically feasible and will produce the highest yield of macroalgae. But um, I think before we go building a pilot scale, we need to understand how much is feasible to grow, how much uh, natural upwelling will support growing, and then what are the environmental consequences of growing a lot of macroalgae offshore. Davis is confident that large-scale seaweed cultivation will work well in California but there are a lot of details to work out before farming can begin. These macroalgae need light to grow, and so that's why we're gonna grow them near the surface. But there are lots of other things in the ocean that need light to grow too. So phytoplankton, you know, these uh, very small plants that are really the base of the oceanic food chain also need light to grow. So you can imagine if we put enough kelp farms out there, then we might be shading some of these phytoplankton. And so at what point do you significantly start shading the phytoplankton community. While there are some risks associated with seaweed farming, they pale in comparison to the potential benefits. Because seaweeds remove carbon from water the same way trees remove carbon from air, cultivating them can help alleviate the impacts of climate change. Some scientists estimate that a network of seaweed farms spanning just 9% of our world's oceans could offset current carbon emissions entirely. But we won't know the true potential of seaweed farming until more farmers get their feet wet. 